Today, I'm going to be speaking with Raheem Suleiman, the CEO of Neo Performance Materials. Morning, Jack. How are you today? I'm good. Raheem, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. And where are you? I'm in our Toronto offices today. Okay. And that's, that's I wanted to, to say something about that, so I'm glad you, you uh, told us where you are. Uh, as far as I can see, Neo Performance is the only company in North America that actually produces and sells profitably rare earth products globally. And it, it, it's, it's not well known enough that, that, that actually Neo is our core rare earth company. I, I think I recall that the company was founded about 22 or 23 years ago. Is that correct? Probably even longer than that. It's been through okay. a lot of different incarnations, but you're absolutely right in terms of Neo's history has been a, a history of a company that has always been EBITDA profitable through upswings and downstrings in the rare earth market. Uh, we focused on the value add more than the commodity. Uh, so it obviously changes our profitability dynamics over time, but the core thesis of the company is to focus on value add. And even in a low environment, we are, we're a highly profitable company. Yeah, yes, and, and and I'm I'm impressed by the range of your products. And e even though you're basically the senior rare earth product company today in the Americas, you you've been at it the longest. And and I I'm only interested in profitable ventures. I don't care about those who talk about it or or sell at a loss, praying for subsidies. Okay, so uh, that that's unique. And again. Uh, more people have have to know about this. So, and to do that, they have to think about it and and find find out about it. Well, what I'd like I'd like today to begin by talking about something other than rare earths, which is a business that I know that Neo has been in for some time, and that is the, the production of gallium products. Now, uh, I recall many many years ago that uh, actually I met um, the fellow who founded the company, which your company bought uh, back in the early part of this century at, at a meeting. And, and he was then negotiating to, to sell it to, to Neil. And what, this is 15 years, more than 15 years ago. And when we discussed volumes, I was astounded. Because even at the time, the company in Peterborough, Ontario, was was processing certainly all of the gallium in, in the Americas, uh, and was quite frankly the largest supplier of gallium I'd ever heard of. Okay, at that time, the company had about twenty five percent of the world's uh, products, and most of the material came from recycling, and some from from actually uh, or or tailings and 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 things like that. Where are you today in the production of gallium products, which the U.S. Department of Defense, for example, and the, and the U.S. federal government are calling supercritical materials for uh, the semiconductor industry? Yeah, they clearly are very critical materials. And as you said, super uh, critical materials, and particularly for the semiconductor industry, which is going through its own evolution of, um, you know, getting some geographic diversity in terms of the production of semiconductors elsewhere in the world. And that means that we desperately need more gallium production um, elsewhere in the world. And when I say elsewhere in the world, I'm obviously referring to the primary source of gallium for the rest of the world has been China. And China produces 96% of the mm -hmm. world's primary gallium. And as you know, and as, as many others know, China has put in restrictions on the shipments of gallium um, specifically for the semiconductor universe, but actually all restrictions of shipments of gallium outside of China. And that has caused a lot of churn uh, for the rest of the world and impacts the ability for the rest of the world to grow its semiconductor business. But NEO sits in a very unique space. As you've talked about, we have developed a technology and we have IP in our technology to be able to recycle gallium. So gallium that comes out of scrap, gallium that comes out of sludges, all of that material comes back, um, gets recaptured into the system, uh, is processed in our Peterborough plant um, to, to create a base gallium. And then we also have the ability to upgrade that into very high purity gallium. So 
it is a very exciting business. It is the only recycler of gallium uh, of its kind in North America. There's mm-hmm. a lot of interest, obviously, uh, with respect to continued supply and continued growth of that business. And we're very excited about its prospects. Okay, now uh, going back uh, to the rare earth space, what is what is the status of your of your operation in Europe, uh, where you're 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 planning a serious upgrade of your uh, Estonian facility? Yeah, so we have a number of different um, facilities in Europe, but I think the ones we're referring to specifically are probably twofold. One is the magnet facility uh, mm-hmm. that we're building in Europe, as well as the rare earth separation business that we already have in Europe, but we are expanding it and growing it and doing more exciting things. Um, the, well, I'll start with the magnet business. Uh, the magnet business is to make rare earth magnets. Rare earth magnets are the things that drive the most powerful and most energy efficient motors in the world. It is the key uh, to the energy transition um, and clean energy movement as new and more powerful motors allow us to draw less energy. It's key to um, the electrification of vehicles and all forms of electric electrification, whether it's pure electric, but also hybrids, um, plug-in hybrids, and even internal combustion engines, because even those Uh, vehicles are looking for more efficient motors so that they can have a smaller package size. Our facility is going extremely well. We started the development of this facility uh, in the middle of 2023. The building is up. It's on time and on budget. Most of the equipment, if not all the equipment, is now in the facility. It's all being commissioned, uh, all of it on time and on budget. We have tremendous amount of interest from our customers. We've actually been awarded uh, a piece of business from a, a, a tier one in Europe. Uh, for, you know, with the maximum capacity of that will be about 35% of the capacity of our facility. And we were awarded that business before the business was even built, before the, before the factory was even built. And now that the factory is built and the equipment is in place, we're seeing just a tremendous amount of interest from our customers. As you know, Jack, 90% of all rare earth magnets are produced in China today. Uh, it is a extremely concentrated um risk that our OEMs, our customers face, our whole global supply chain faces, and we need more capabilities elsewhere in the world. And NEO is in a unique position that we've had such a long history of experience in rare earth magnetics that adding this capability to Europe has been um, really important to NEO and I think really important to the industry. Have, have you had any thoughts about uh, duplicating that that uh, facility in Canada or the United States? Absolutely. I think that if you look at the capacity that we're building in Estonia, and if you look at the growth rate of rare earth magnetics and what's required for, I said, all forms of, of um, energy efficiency, and that's, you know, it goes beyond vehicles. It could go to wind farms. It could go to a number of different applications, humanoid robots, all of these things that will require um, more powerful motors means the demand curve uh, is extremely high. And the question that we all have to, to ask ourselves is how are we going to satisfy that demand curve? Um, and I don't think we can satisfy it with 90% of in just in China. We have to sa- satisfy it with global growth. So we are considering, you know, we are building our phase one in, a, in Europe now. We will follow that with phase two in Europe, and then we will follow that with facilities elsewhere in the world, because we know that the requirement is there, the needs are there, um, and the supply is short. And NEO does offer the most vertically integrated solution, because we do have uh, separation capabilities as well, as well as metal making capabilities. So you put those kind of all of those facets together, and we have an incredible business model. Do do you... um plan to produce only customer specific magnets or a range of magnets? Uh, There'll be a range of magnets for certain. So, you know, uh, when we, we talk about um, our facility originally as being focused on uh, wind farms and electric vehicles, but we are already talking to customers with applications that extend beyond that. And I think that, you know, when you're launching a facility, you need a certain level of focus for your product set and over time you'll continue to grow. So, Within the technology, within our equipment, we are capable of doing all kinds of different solutions, uh, but we will start the facility with a more focused approach. Can, can I ask, how long has Neil been manufacturing rare earth permanent magnets? That's an excellent question, Jack. Is We've been in the rare earth business and the, and the magnet business for 30 years. Uh, mm-hmm. We produced inside of China, uh, which is, of course, as I mentioned, where 90% of all magnets are produced. And then we have a, a bonded magnetic powders business outside of China as well in Thailand. Uh, we recently purchased a soft magnetics and, and magnetics assembly business in the UK. And of course, now we're launching our business here. So experience wise, 
you know, we meet all of the criteria that one would want to see, right? You'd want to see an experienced, financially strong company with strong, positive EBITDA. You'd want to see a company that has capability in rare earth magnets and has the technology. Because as we've talked about, there's now also restrictions on the transfer of rare earth magnet magnetic technology outside of China. So if you don't mm -hmm. have that technology today, uh, it's a tough it's a tough road. So we have the experience in terms of the rare earth making technology, and we have experience servicing our customers. Um, in terms of automotive customers, in terms of product design and assemblies and things that our customers need. So it's not just a matter of delivering a material. It is about understanding what your customers' requirements are and having the experience and capabilities to deliver. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, uh, I'll let my the viewers look this up. Uh, the sine qua non, uh, as, the, as the ancient Romans say, that, that with, without which it cannot be, is experience. And I think your company in the West has the most experience of producing rare earth permanent magnets of any company today. And I think that that puts you ahead of everyone else if you can r ramp up your volume. And and uh, so I, I realize that you don't want to disclose who your uh, customers are, and I, I understand that, okay? But can I ask you, if have you been approached by or approached uh, North American uh, OEM automotive uh, suppliers or or uh, manufacturers. Absolutely, and look, our our customers are, are quite a quite a group of um, geographically diverse customers. And look, ultimately, it's the OEM that that drives the strategy and need mm -hmm. to have the diversification of the rare earth magnets. Uh, and we have lots of business with OEMs directly, but but more particularly in our environment, it's also the motor manufacturer. That, that is critical to the supply making decisions. And right. given that we have a 30 year history in making uh, rare earth magnetics, we have connections with all of the uh, various major motor manufacturers. So we have connectivity in both levels of customers and connectivity that exists where you're talking about things, not just strategically, we need a partnership and we need alignment. Um, and this is you know, a supply chain problem that we need to solve. Those are very important discussions to have. But we also can translate those discussions to engineering and to purchasing and to the technical requirements of what is actually required. And in terms of, you know, like I said, we've already won um, a piece of business for our, our European business, uh, and it's based on a competitive process and delivering samples that meet the customer's requirements. Of course, we have a very large book of business already uh, in Asia, both in China and our, and our Southeast Asian plant with our customers, so they have a high level of confidence um, that, you know, in terms of other programs that we have been able to deliver in the past. Well, uh, you know, uh, unusually for me, I'm, I'm sort of speechless because you basically answered all the questions I was going to ask. And I think you are the, the leading company, certainly in this space at this time in the Americas. And I can, again, I congratulate you on, on surviving the last few years of turmoil. And I, I think you have quite a, a rosy future. And I, uh, I'm looking forward to speaking to you at PDAC in a month or so and finding out even more about what, what's going on. So thank you, Raheem. Thank you very much. And uh, again, uh, we should all be watching Neo Performance. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jack. I really appreciate your time.